Oh man, I am so excited about today's song. Steve's gonna send me the chart. It should be here any minute. Mail delivery! Oh, there it is. Uh, come in! And uh, so, you know, this is just one of those songs that... Mail delivery! Oh, we must be at the back door. Come in! Oh, thank you! Appreciate it. Nice! The chart is here from Steve himself. And let's see what that says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! What, <laughs> what? Hold on a second. Let me try that again. And we're going to get a deep look at this wonderful Charlie Parker tune, Blues for Alice. Now, check out how you can get more videos like this one. Just navigate to Bruce Gregory Video On Demand. When you get to the site, you can browse videos in a wide variety of categories. Each video covers a different topic and has bonus content and supporting documentation. There's even a free trial option. Don't forget to use your promo code to get a discount off your first purchase. And the link for that promo code is in the description down below. Now, if you dig the video, throw it a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell notification because that's going to let you know every time I upload a new video. And of course, the channel releases new videos on every Tuesday and every Friday. So let's get started. Mr. Charlie Parker. Now, this is one deep, deep tune. Now, it's got some interesting components, but really when we boil it down, it comes down to a modified blues. And Charlie was a big fan of playing the blues. Of course, he played the blues or quarter blues phrases in every aspect of his playing. And you can find just about every solo. He had some blues references. And that is not uncommon. You saw that with John Coltrane and, of course, Miles Davis as well well. Now, we have to start with the chord changes in this tune, and then quickly I'm going to get into the melody. So the changes of this tune, he's basically starting on an F major 7, which is uncommon for blues, and then he does this great back cycling approach. Of course, if you don't know what back cycling is, make sure you check out my lesson on There Will Never Be Another You, and we get in depth about what back cycling is. But briefly, we're basically moving harmonically using chord changes in the scale or in the key center and basically going from the one chord, in this case, to the four. So it's a blues with a bunch of chords diatonically placed strategically inside. So we basically start on the one chord, which is F major 7, and we're walking down the scale. E minor 7 flat 5, A7, D minor 7 to G7, C minor 7 to F7, and then to the 4. And the 4 here is dominant, just like a regular blues. So in context, it sounds all like this. And that's where we land, on that 4. And then he basically uses the model of chromatic 2 fives to get us back to the 1. Check it out. And then a turnaround. And that's the entire harmony, so we can think about it as a blues. If I played all of that together, it's going to sound like this. I used a different turnaround in the song, the band track, my solo session on this session, and just now, because I feel like it just offers a little bit more of a stretch when it comes to the harmony. And basically what that is, is three, six, 
and then a, a chord substitution, which is a major seven, D flat major seven, to G flat major seven back to one. But you could use the standard turnaround, which is just one six two five. But it's just a different harmonic approach. Now that we have all that under our belt, the killer part of this song, of course, is the melody. Charlie Parker was masterful. Every single melody that he wrote is a study in itself. And I encourage you, really, even if you don't get into transcribing his solos, make sure to at least learn the melodies of the tunes that he wrote because you can learn so much about bebop in this tune. So the melody goes like this. this way. the entire melody. Now, what can we do in terms of soloing over this tune? Well, we're kind of thinking of it as a blues with a little bit of modification. We're in the key of F major, and that's where I'm starting. So basically, over the first part of that, I'm kind of thinking F major scale. I can kind of get away with F major and then I'm thinking of a 2-5 to the 4 chord just like I might play in a blues and so I'm thinking B flat major there till I get to that B flat dominant and that's really important because normally going to a 4 chord when we start in F major we're going to think B flat major 7 instead of dominant 7 and I've actually heard this tune misinterpreted where it was a B flat major 7 but really the original tune is a B flat dominant 7 so we're thinking mixolydian there and we're kind of staying diatonic throughout check it out Masterfully, Charlie Parker turns that dominant chord to a minor 7, B flat minor 7, and he walks it down to get back to a 2 5 to 1. It's masterful. So, what am I doing? Here, I'm just thinking B flat minor 7 or B flat Dorian. I'm not really so much always thinking melodic minor here because even though we really are thinking of these as chromatic two fives. The thing about it here is I want to remain diatonic because the tune has that kind of feel. However, it still would work. Then I'm getting to A minor 7 to D7, and there I'm just thinking of it as a 1 chord. So anytime I encounter a 3 or a 3 to 6, I kind of really think of those as the 1 chord. And then a flat 3. There's where I really can get into playing melodic minor a little bit more. When I encounter a flat 3, if it's a minor 7 or a diminished, we could use there. But really, here's my melodic minor. And then a 2-5 back to 1, which is an F major scale. And that's the entire solo strategy, the A section and the B section of this tune. Check it out. <laughs> at the beginning of the video I use a little bit different of a turnaround for this because it's just one that I feel has a little bit more flavor and you can even make that a six chord or a dominant chord if you want and so what am I doing there well I'm treating the three six as a one chord and I get to that D flat major to the G flat major I'm just thinking D flat major and I'm resolving it back to F. Kind of like that. So let's check that out in the solo. And that's really 
everything. The advice I would give you is really learn the melody of this song. And of course, don't forget to check out other tunes that have backcycling because the more and more you play on those kinds of tunes, the more and more you're going to get experience with hearing how backcycling works, not only from one to four, but also from four to one. <laughs> What can I say? Charlie Parker, masterful. He just knew how to take tunes and make them correct, in my opinion. Of course, killer bebop melodies also help when it comes to writing tunes, and Charlie was the master, the ultimate master at that. Now, if you dig this particular lesson, make sure to check out the lesson on There Will Never Be Another You, because you can learn a lot more of backcycling on that particular lesson, and of course, any of the other lessons on the VHX.TV site. Of course, the channel releases a new video on every Tuesday and every Friday. And of course, don't forget to check out the new series on Wednesdays, Jazz Standards You Need to Know. And I will see you next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.